Good morning. Good morning. Hi, it's Tanji here and welcome to Mindset Mastery Monday. Me and the birds here in Noosa. Uh, Instagram, hi. You are a little bit sideways because my phone is on charge on the lead, leaning up to my um, computer. So hence the lean. Hopefully it doesn't fall. So hey, Kate Ashton, how are you, my love? Good morning. Great to have you tune in. Uh, so my name's Tanja. I'm a peak performer specialist I really help uh, particularly real estate business leaders and teams grow themselves and their business in the least amount of time hey Tina Harvey thanks for tuning in my love you know uh, every uh, Monday morning good morning Simon great to have you here can you hear me with the birds <laughs> how fabulous are they um, I'm here in um, the mantra at Noosa I've just done a, a leadership workshop with the Hodges Real Estate Group. I can actually see there's a few people that are getting up out of their, their villas here, their rooms. And uh, today's Mindset Mastery Monday conversation sounds awesome. Yeah, you'd be used to this time when you've got birds up in your beautiful part of the woods. Uh, so I've had a couple of amazing days here. Um, hey, Ben, great to have you. I've had a couple of, um, great to have you here. A couple of amazing days here, really spending some time with real estate leaders, encouraging them to lead phenomenal lives for themselves, their teams and their um, families and uh, today's Mindset Mastery Monday conversation is ask I actually just want to ask you a question and I'd love you to interact with this because I'm really curious if you were told that you had 24 hours to live what would you do like no kidding what would you do g'day Jessica great to have you here and the reason I'm asking this is a couple of days ago I got a phone call uh, from one of my best friends Tiffany to say that a dear friend of ours a friend of mine for 20 years uh, suddenly died and uh, you know she was uh, I think she was 51 I know she turned 50 last year so she may have just turned 51 um, and she was she died doing what she loved she was riding her horse that had a really tragic accident and here one day gone the next hey um, Jackie Bailey great to have you here so first of all I want to I want to say for all of you that reached out and sent your love and blessings um, I'm very very grateful uh, that was really beautiful of you um, tell all I love how important I've been in my life. Great, Kate's already started. So thank you for your beautiful messages. And when I was lying in bed this morning thinking about what I want to what do I want to talk about today? What do I want what do I want to have a conversation around? It really is morning Stephen. I want to know if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? Like really no kidding, not conceptually like you got a, you got a phone call, you got a diagnosis, you have 24 hours to live. It's inevitable. You will be dead in 24 hours. Tell me what you would do. I'm really curious. <clears throat> type it in on Facebook and type it in here on Instagram. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, in, on Instagram. So, you know, as soon as I finish this Mindset Mastery Monday, I'm going to head downstairs and I'm going to have lunch, uh, sorry, breakfast with my girlfriend Tiffany and Shandy. Shandy is the man that was about to propose to my friend uh, in August this year. They've been together nine months, absolutely divinely in love. My friend Joe Bruce, who was the entrepreneur of four beauty, um, beautiful boutiques, Jojo, um, here in Noosa. Hey, Chris Cotton. Chris, I'm asking you a question, mate. In all honesty, if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? Simon, I'm keen to know. What would you do? Your top three, Jackie, Stephen, what would you do? <clears throat> what would you do? Kate um, has written here, I'd tell all I love how important uh, they've been in my life and my time here on earth. Uh, ditto. That was the first thing that I would do. <clears throat> Kate, Stephen Bailey, I'd be with my wife and children. And and where would you be, Steve? And uh and what would you do? Would you just hang at home? Would you go to a favourite place? <clears throat> so, yeah, in about um, 25 minutes, I'm going to go and have breakfast with Tiff and I'm going to meet the man who was going to propose to my girlfriend. And um, meeting on really sad terms, but, you know, life is, it's just reminded me that life is super precious. Uh, so Tina has said, I'd spend half the day at my parents' retirement village and the other half have my nearest and dearest over for a fire, talk, laugh, play and dance. That's so beautiful, Tina. 
it really is about spending quality time with people that you love. Um, George Findercarkas, great to have you tune in. George, I'm asking the question, if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? I'm laughing and waving. I've got one of the guys here, I think it's Jason, that was at the leadership conference I did yesterday, He's standing on his balcony and uh, I'd, I'd turn my devices around, but it's going to be tricky, and about eight parrots have just flown into his balcony and they're on his arms and you know that's for me just a beautiful metaphor of life could be just gorgeous and precious and surprising in one moment and then you know equally devastating in a heartbeat so uh, you know some of the top global answers if you have 24 hours to live what would you do definitely like Kate and Tina are saying spend quality time with people that you love um, tell people the, the, how much they've meant to you. Three, forgive. One of the things that kills us, literally kills our life force whilst we're alive, is hanging on to resentment, hanging on to pain, hanging on to suffering, hanging on to the mistakes that we've made in, in the past in our lives, hanging on to the shit that people said to us, I feel like I'm rapping, hanging on to the shit that people said to us when we were kids, when we were bullied in the, the, the you know, playground, hanging on to, you know, the pain of, of the past. And that really does erode our experience of living fully in today. Jessica's written, I would have a big party with my closest friends and family. Soak up the love and laughter. Yeah, great. Why not? Why wouldn't you? Um, another another um, great, absolutely great idea, Jess. Another um, one of the most popular top 10 responses was food. People would eat quality food. They'd stop beating themselves up and they would fill themselves with miraculous flavors and just enjoy um, the simple things in life. So I'm curious for those that have tuned in and that you can type safely, if you were told that you were gonna die in 24 hours, what, you, what would you do? And it may sound um, a little morbid, but it's also got me thinking, what is the stuff that's holding you back from living fully <clears throat> now? Because often many of us, when we get a wake up call, we start doing the things that we've always wanted to do. We start forgiving the people we know we need to forgive. We start reaching out and opening up and being brave and courageous. What if we didn't have to wait? Hey, Joanne, <clears throat> thanks for your beautiful kind words about the loss of my friend. So, Joanne, I'm asking the question, if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? And also the next question I have for you is, what is holding you back? I actually would really love this to be an interactive session. Hey, Brooklyn, thanks for tuning in. Um, I, I want to share something with you, my love. So can you please DM me your mobile? Um, because, yeah, there's something really important I need to share with you. <clears throat> I'm asking the question, Brooklyn, if you had 24 hours to live, hun, what would you do? And if you weren't afraid, if you didn't need a life or death situation to to inspire you to live an amazing life what what is this i'm asking you what is the stuff that's holding you back from living a life that you love what is it that is holding you back i'd love to know type it in <clears throat> so yeah, for me, I'm keen to um, play a, gig, a big game and inspire as many people as I can to go beyond their fear and what stops them. Brendan Saris, um, Saraf has joined in. G'day, Brendan. I'm asking the question, mate. I know you'll dig this question. If you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? And if you weren't afraid, what would you do? I'm keen to know. Stephen, have a digger station experience with Jackie, Cam and uh, Shania, beautiful names, and Jules Verne restaurant in the Eiffel Tower. Wow. Now, that's thinking big. That's another great um, segue. How many, how many of us use money, time uh, and other reasons why we can't do the thing we love that impacts us on dreaming big if you were told you had 24 hours to live what would you do what would life be like if we lived like we had 24 hours to live like rather than wait for the diagnosis what about fulfilling on our bucket list what about seeing how well how much would it cost to have a beautiful digger station in the eiffel tower 
with those that we love. What are the flights? What would it cost? And why don't we actually put it in existence? Not because we're going to die, but because we desire to live. What are the dreams that are existing inside of you that you have been putting off for one day, someday, when you have the time, when you have the money, when your business is this and that, when the debt is paid off? I'm not asking you to live irresponsibly. I'm just asking us to ask ourselves, where are we putting a lid on our lives? Where are we letting fear get in the way of living a life that really inspires us? Um, beach house with the family. Brendan would hang out at the beach house with the family. Would you go spearfishing? And what would you do? And if you had 24 hours to live and you were hanging out with those that you love, what would the conversations be like? What would you say? <clears throat> G'day, Lou. Great to, to have you join in too. We're asking the question, Lou, if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? So now I'm asking you, what is holding you back from living like you had 24 hours to live? What is holding you back from doing the things that you would love to do? Type it in. I'm keen to know. What is holding you back from doing the things that you'd love to do? So for me, as I started saying before, I'm really passionate about um, inspiring as many people as I can to live a fully self-expressed, enriched, joyful, inspiring life, despite their circumstances, and looking at how we can be really resourceful to do that. Uh, what's getting in the way? Uh, I'm in action at the moment to get some support to free me up to be able to do more speaking, training, and coaching to inspire people to go beyond their subconscious saboteur and um, so you know help to to help me build the foundation to be able to do that on a bigger scale <clears throat> that's just something that you know is um, I'm inspired and passionate about so would you ring people that you haven't spoken to in a while and tell them you love them and tell them the difference that they've made to your life? Would you eat the food that you've really been desiring to eat because you've been watching your weight or, you know, you haven't been able to? Who would you forgive? What would you create in the world? And what legacy would you leave if you could in, in the short space of time? Uh, as I said, I'm up here in Noosa. I got the news a couple of days ago that a, a friend of mine uh, died and uh, suddenly doing something that she loved, which was riding her horse. And here's a little story before I sign off about what's inspired me about my friend Joe Bruce, who is no longer with us. 20 years ago, we had a, f a few girlfriends over and we were. I was asking the question, what's your dream life? If you could do anything that you oh, desire, yeah, what would oh, you yeah. do? <clears throat> and Jo said she would create Jojo's Bazaar. It was a, a shop of bohemian goods where um, she would travel the world, finding things that she'd love, replicate them and share them with those price. Fast forward 20 years. I'm now in Noosa on Hastings Street, the main street here in Noosa, right at the intersection, there is Jojo's, a beautiful bohemian store. It is packed full of divine um, clothing, accessories, shoes and jewellery. And she has not only one, she has three others. One's opened up in um, a, a big shopping centre and it is huge. She um, followed her dream. She was nutty as a snake, crazy um, as all get out, completely, you know, freaky and flighty and didn't finish her sentences and absolutely ebullient. And when I walked into the shop yesterday, I was joyfully um, wrapped to hear the staff behind the counter laughing. And I walked in and I, and I had my hand on my heart and I said to everyone, you know, how are you? And they said, we're all right. And I said, I'm a friend of Joe's. I'm come out, I've come up from Melbourne, ironically, for work. But, you know, I'm here. And she, I know she just came over and we all I said, it's great to hear you laughing. And they said, we're just remembering her. And there was the, the shop was closed um, the day after she died. And then the next day it was open. And they said that Joe would have said, get to work, <laughs> you know, go and get to work and make people happy. So it's nice to know that her legacy is alive through the vision that she had 20 years ago. And um, I want to really leave you with this, you know, this question. If you had 24 hours to live and if you have a dream that's burning inside of you, what is getting in the way and what excuses are you or we making for the reasons why we can't live life out loud and notice whatever those are today and see if there is something that you can do get a mark one action that you can take whether that's a phone call to a friend some forgiveness that you can declare even if it's someone that's passed um book that ticket for the eiffel tower because we never know 
when it's time to go. So on that note, I'm going to sign off a very short, brief, not fully prepared today, just more of a inquiry into if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? I invite you to just ponder on that question today. And as intuitively people come into your mind or into your heart, don't put it off to call them, to think of them, or, you know, to act upon following up with them or forgiving them. When you think of someone, trust it may be the universe giving you a message that you need to speak to that person now. I cannot tell you how many times I've thought of someone. I've had many reasons why I probably couldn't have spoken to them at that time. G'day, Grant. Great to have you here. Uh, but I, I actually called them and it was ironic, the timing of the call that said, it's a perfect time that you call. So reach out, trust your intuition and live life like you've got 24 hours to live. And I'm curious, what would you do? I'm going to sign off with that, pack my bags and head down and meet the man who was about to propose to my girlfriend and see if there's anything that I can do to fill him up with love as he navigates the next few days of figuring out and be of his beloved off to the ether and, and get on with his life. Um, without her physically here. Life is super precious. It is here one minute and gone the next. Please don't take it for granted. Don't take your health for granted. Don't take the people in your life for granted and tell people you love them and you care and let go of the shit that weighs you down. Have a beautiful Monday. Have an amazing week. And as always, in the great wise words of Maya Angelou, remember that people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. On this note today, make yourself and others feel worthy, loved, important, and miraculous that we're even here. Marcus Smith, thanks for joining. Oh, I'm just about to sign off. Thanks for spending some of your morning with me. Have a majestic Monday. I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Thanks for tuning in on Facebook. See you soon.